a rift continues to grow between the local forces of the Saudi UAE coalition. After dozens of their soldiers were killed in a Houthi attack last week, southern separatists blamed the internationally recognized government of President Abdrabu Mansour Hadi of failing to protect them and called for Hadi's government to be overthrown. With fragile negotiations taking place to bring an end to Yemen's war, the United Nations is calling on the parties to stand down. We're, we're very concerned about the, the ongoing uh, violence that we're seeing in, in Aden. Uh, this is something that uh, the Special Envoy himself has, uh, has stated. Um, it is important uh, for everyone to recommit themselves to a political process. Hadi's government has support from Saudi Arabia. The southern secessionists, led by Idris al-Zabaidi, are backed by the United Arab Emirates. While the Emiratis announced their withdrawal from Yemen last month, they've armed, trained and left behind 90,000 troops made up of fighters from southern communities and the coastal plains. That opens up the prospect of a new front line between a UAE-backed force against the Saudi-backed government. It's going to be very dangerous. They are on the same side in terms of uh, fighting the Houthi or a, nor a northern opponent out. However, in reality, they have not been getting along for months. And uh, the southern separatist forces, especially represented in the Southern Transitional Council, have called repeatedly to secession and feel like the time is ideal to self-determination and to pursue it uh, now. So it seems that although they're fighting against a common enemy, the time has come where differences amongst them um, are, are more important than just fighting that enemy. The area where the fighting is taking place is the highest point in the city and near the presidential palace. And even though the building is largely empty, it's still considered the seat of government. Without a resolution to their long-standing demands, southern separatists may decide to try and take their seat at the negotiating table if one isn't given to them. Andrew Chappelle, Al Jazeera. Live now to Sena and Al Jazeera's Mohammed Al Atab, who's there for us this hour. Mohammed, as to this new front opening up in Aden, just get us right up to date. What's the latest information you have? Yes, uh, the uh, confrontations continue, despite that the uh, after the the began uh, the the uh, people there left uh, sh shortly left for. A little bit of a ceasefire, but no. But uh, in the afternoon of the, yesterday, they continued their first confrontations. Up to now, these, uh, the confrontations continue and also escalate, uh, especially in the, in, the, in the areas between uh, Creator and Mu'alla and at Tawahid. Al Mu'alla and at Tawahid are the, were the biggest uh, concentration of population there. Uh, most of the rights activists are concerned about the lives of civilians there. Uh, many appeals have been also issued by civilians who are uh, suffering from chronic diseases because the, uh, the situation is getting dangerous for them to stay uh, trapped uh, between both uh, fighting sides. Uh, also, the uh, confrontations uh, continue in the, in the, in the area b b between Al Mu'alla, Khor Maksar, uh, where, the, where the, uh, the presidential palace is situated. Uh, at least uh, 11 people have been killed, according to uh, some sources, but we cannot confirm uh, the death toll to now because the uh, first confrontation is still going on and there is a difficulty to, uh, to check how many people have, be, uh, have been killed during these co confrontations. Mohammed, thanks very much.